What gives me the most pleasure is to see how the foundation has evolved over the years from its very beginning. And all the people that I've met by being on the foundation, everybody has the same purpose. Everybody wants to do something for the library. And finally then to see how the library is today and think about how it was before the foundation was started. That gives me the most pleasure. What inspired me to work on the library is first, the importance of libraries, and secondly, I'm a native of New Rochelle, and I always wanted New Rochelle to have the best. Bill reached out to me and said, you know, we have a centennial celebration, we want to do something really special to celebrate, and at the same time, we're inaugurating a foundation for the library because the library needs money and it, there's not enough in the budget to do the things that we need to do. So, um, you know, I hadn't really thought too much about the library before that, but then once I got involved, I, I really caught the bug. <laughs> well, what brings me joy about the library is, you know, just walking through the library. Walking through the library and seeing people really using it. Seeing, you know, young mothers and their children just, you know, enjoying books in the children's room. Um, I think it was Ken Anderson who actually said, you know, you ought to think about this. You ought to consider, you know, the, the, the foundation and uh, it's starting up. It would be really interesting and um, you, you'd probably be a really good fit. And that's how I got involved. Really. You know, we got E.L. Doctorow involved in helping us to um, launch the foundation. He was our honorary chair when we did the Centennial Gala. We figured out, you know, that we wanted to do this big event and, um, you know, tell our story to a lot. Um, the Centennial Celebration, which we kicked off the foundation in 1994, was one of the first big things that we did and it had a star-studded group of people who were involved with it, including Francis Sternhagen, Ossie Davis, and Ruby right. Dee, and uh, Louis Rukeyser, and Robert Merrill. It was a lot of fun, and from that point, we just um, continued to do events, celebrities, and right. then we had the Reach for Tomorrow campaign, which was the first big capital campaign we did. Right. right. That was somewhere around 1998, right. I think. Right. We've all taken up the challenge of trying to meet the expectations and, and actually even beyond the expectations, just the dreams that our, the citizens of New Rochelle have. We've been fortunate to have library directors yes. look ahead and forward and implement That's right. what were our suggestions are and we take his suggestions or That's right. her That's suggestions. Right. So that's one of the good things that we've had. The other really big thing that people aren't aware of, and maybe it's not as much of an issue now, but it certainly was when we started, is the digital divide. Because so many people could not afford That's right. to, and we take for granted that we have modern computers right. in our homes. We do. Not right. everybody does, right. and not everybody can access right. the whole world of information. Right. It's so important to democracy right. that people have access to information, that they're not just reliant on the newspaper or, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. whatever channel they have. Sure, to, sure. But that sure. they can look up anything sure. and get a variety of viewpoints. We, we kept trying to make really good decisions every step of the way with the information that we had. I mean, we talked that we were committed to a library for the future. We were committed to uh, trying to close the digital divide. We were committed to trying to making sure that there was as you know broad access as possible. And those are always good goals. And we, 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 we did what we could to make sure that the library could be very responsive to the changes in the community. Uh, Without the foundation adding to the, the pot of money that's Correct. available, we'd have a very different library. That's true. We wouldn't have, you know, the Reach for Tomorrow floor. We wouldn't have the Ossie Davis Theater. Right. There is this place, this almost sacred place, where anybody can go and sit in the corner, sit at a desk, or 
sit in a chair, sit on the floor, and lose themselves in fantasy or romance or science or whatever. I mean, you can be anywhere, be anybody, do anything, and it doesn't cost you anything.